Levels. They are the benchmarks we use to measure the power of our characters in role-playing games. And if level 1 is the baseline, the starting point for RPG heroes, what the heck is level 0 and why would you want to play at level 0? Quite simple, really. Level 0 is for... It's for people who like awesome stuff, like 500 new monsters for 5e, and I even got to write one. It's all in Dungeon Denizens, the latest wildly successful Kickstarter from our sponsor, Goodman Games. All 500 plus monsters were fully illustrated in physical mediums, including my own, which came out pretty creepy. The Nisufti. These little creatures are cat-like homunculi crafted by vampires from marshland clay, the bone meal of murderers, and most vitally, the blood of their creators. The Nisufti is the first line of influence for its vampiric master, creeping into villages at night and gradually poisoning sleeping victims with the vampire's blood to prime them for undead servitude. You can check them out with over 499 other monsters and more being added as stretch goals, plus cool add-ons like a GM screen, two-page dungeons using the new monsters, cardboard pawns of the monsters, and more. Dungeon Denizens is available for 5e and DCC, but the Kickstarter ends on March 21st, and remember to use the link below so they know who sent you. <clears throat> so, I'm Bob, this is where we learn how to have more fun playing RPGs together, and level zero is for an RPG character before they become the hero. As someone who enjoys both the heights of super heroic, overpowered fantasy adventure and the depths of grim, dark, gritty wilderness survival adventure, I think level zero is the perfect place to start your own hero's journey. And logistically, it's the best way to ease new players into a new system. So I'm gonna share how I've homebrewed and run level zero characters in 5e and how to build a level zero character by the book for Dungeon Crawl Classics, which is famous for their incredibly fun and memorable level zero adventures. And I have a fun announcement about this at the end of the video, but hey, leave a comment below sharing whether you've ever played a level zero character in any system and let me know how it went. Now, this is Luna Alkmar, a level zero 13 year old half tiefling with no character class and abysmal ability scores. I made and played this character in 2016 when my friends and I had been into D&D for a year at most and none of us, not even the GM, really cared about the rule books. You can tell because we still didn't understand the difference between character sheets of different editions. We homebrewed everything in those days, including these level zero characters for a simple one shot. We the players did not know it going in, but the premise of this one shot was for us and a group of other adolescent NPCs to safely escape our village as it was being raided in the night by a small army of goblins. I specifically remember my character's older sister, Tara, see what I did there, Luna, Tara? She got cut down by a goblin right in front of me as we snuck out of our house through a window. It was pretty brutal, but that, is some classic hero backstory material. And rather than just making it up myself and writing it down, we experienced that backstory moment. So for the story, for character development, this kind of backstory focused level zero is awesome. For the mechanics, like I said, we really didn't know what we were doing. Seriously, look at these stats. All nines and tens with four out of 10 hit points remaining and an armor class of only 10. So every check, saving throw, and attack roll was tense. We scrambled to use anything at our disposal to gain advantage. And for a 5e one-off, it was super fun. But unless you want to play a horror game where your one character is lucky if they make it out alive, this is not the ideal way to run a 5e level zero session. Shortly after that one shot, I ran my first session of D&D. Well, wildly homebrewed D&D, and I had all the characters start at level zero. As you can see on this hard to read spreadsheet I made in 2016 to keep track of the weird homebrew classes like Vampire Knight. So these characters also began with low stats, but each one got a 5e background. This was a big upgrade because backgrounds still provide some equipment, some gold, proficiency in skills, tools, or languages, and sometimes a useful character feature. Using backgrounds results in level zero characters who can go toe to toe with a goblin and likely come out on top. And for 5e, this is pretty close to how I would run level zero today. Start with the stats of a 5e commoner, choose your race and apply any special features, then choose your background and write down any equipment or special features. But I have two issues with this method. First, 
that would technically leave us with only four hit points, which is basically zero hit points in 5e. And second, the 5e backgrounds are only available in the player's handbook. Ideally, this character should be completely free for you to make. So here are two possible solutions. One, just set HP at a nice and even 10 and use the free PDF of 1D&D backgrounds, linked in the description. This is nice because you can also pick your race, aka species from this PDF, and these backgrounds give you more bang for their buck by coming with a unique special ability called a feat, in addition to some equipment and proficiencies. Solution two, just pick a 5e class from the 5e SRD, which is also free and linked below, then calculate your hit points like you normally would at level one, and keep one piece of the main class feature. So the Barbarian, for example, would have its d12 hit die, but I would ignore all of these proficiencies except maybe simple weapons and ignore the equipment, and, or at least most of the equipment, and unarmored defense. Rage, however, being the defining feature of the Barbarian class should absolutely make an appearance during this level zero backstory adventure. That character should rage here for the first time and it should be a little sloppy. Since they're supposed to get two uses at level one, they should only have one use at level zero. Then I'd keep one or two of these bullet points and only let it last for 30 seconds instead of the normal duration of one minute. You can follow this pattern for each martial class pretty easily, and for spellcasters, who would normally start with a bunch of spells in 5e, I'd say one cantrip and one first level spell slot. Following this method for 5e, you'll end up with a would-be heroic character who is likely to survive their first low-level adventure and come out with a great story. Plus, it's way faster to make a character this way and way easier for new players to get into the game. If that sounds intuitive to you, give this video a like, or if you have a different idea for level zero in 5e, share it in the comments. Now, if you want a tried and true wild level zero experience, you have to try out Dungeon Crawl Classics because it's built into the game. Overall, DCC plays similarly to D&D, but one of its defining features is the use of a level zero funnel to begin a campaign. Funnels get their name for being deadly adventures that whittle down a large party of level zero peasants into a normal party of level one heroes. The standard approach is for each player to create three to four random level zero characters, and I'm gonna walk you through how to create just one character using the free quick start rules, and yep, they're also linked below. Step one. Determine ability scores, 3d6 in order for each. Of course, 3d6 results in lower stats than a typical 5e character has, but all stats and DCs are a little lower in Dungeon Crawl Classics, so it kind of evens out. Now let's see. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, 12 for strength, that's actually quite good. And 12 for agility as well. Eight for stamina, okay. Another 12, okay, what's going on here? Okay, it's only a 7 for luck, that's not good. And a 10 for intelligence. So pretty pretty down the middle for this guy. For those modifiers, between a 9 and a 12 is just a plus 0, but stamina and luck are both minus 1. <laughs> Step 2. Determine hit points, roll 1d4 adjusted by stamina modifier. Obviously, 1d4 hit points, very low compared to 5e, but again, all the numbers are a little lower, and you do get a bigger hit die at level 1 depending on your class, and if you survive to level 1. A 1. A single hit point adventurer. And technically we had a, we had a minus 1 to our stamina. I'm pretty sure it's a minimum 1. Uh, I don't... <laughs> But step three, determine lucky sign. This is one of my favorite things about DCC characters, having this unique lucky, or in our case, unlucky skill. Uh, we're gonna roll 1d30 adjusted by the luck modifier on table one, two. And that gives us the birth sign of conceived on horseback. So we would add our luck modifier to all mounted attack rolls. But say that this player for whatever reason, really wanted to have this character, you know, we assume they survive, really wanted to have this character be some kind of mounted fighter, cool. I would let them find a way, either bargaining with a patron or finding some ancient relic that allows them 
to change their stars, right? Change their birth sign so their mounted attack rolls aren't forever given this minus one and they can have that go to something hopefully less important. Now step four is to determine our level zero occupation. So this is basically our background and it includes our character's race. 73, that gives us a locksmith. So our trained weapon is a dagger and we have fine tools as our trade goods. This character should get probably plus one die, right? Instead of a d20, they'd probably roll like a d24 on their checks when they're doing stuff for locks. Break it into a room, break it into a chest, what have you. Now step five is choose an alignment. As it says later in this doc, that's lawful, neutral, or chaotic. And by the way, you can of course choose an alignment for your D&D &D level zero character, but I left that part out because most people don't really use alignment in D&D. &D. In DCC, however, there's a good chance that alignment will come into play during your adventures, and this choice will affect your character's abilities for certain classes if they reach level one. For this guy, I'm just gonna go with chaotic. Why not? Step six, determine starting money, roll 5d12 copper pieces. Yeah, gold is actually a treasure in DCC, and your level zero character probably won't have any at the start. Step seven is just making sure we marked our equipment from our occupation and giving us one other random piece of equipment from table 3-3, and we rolled a 23. That's a torch. <laughs> It's pretty, pretty weak, we, they're very cheap. We could have bought that with our copper anyway. Because it does say we can buy more equipment with our copper pieces, and I'm going to skip this step here, but it's good to do because even if this character doesn't survive, the party may get to keep their stuff. Some other things to note. Our AC is 10 plus or minus our agility modifier. Our saving throws are modified by strength, agility, and personality. And I'm not quite sure if it's mentioned in the quick start rules, but if you are playing a level zero dwarf, halfling, or elf, the core rulebook says you do get a subset of their features. For example, dwarves can see in the dark out to 60 feet and have a base speed of 20 feet. And I don't think they're supposed to get this next thing at level zero, but leveled DCC dwarves can also smell gold and gems, and I think that's super cool, so I'd let them have it at level zero. Elves can see in the dark out to 60 feet, and they are sensitive to iron. So wielding or wearing iron equipment causes them to lose one hit point per day. Elves also gain a plus four bonus when looking for secret doors, and halflings can see in the dark out to 30 feet and have a base speed of 20 feet. And again, it doesn't mention it specifically as a level zero trait, but halflings are naturally small in size and lightweight, which should be used to their advantage even at level zero. Then the final step of character creation is attempt to survive your first dungeon. If you survive and reach 10 XP, you advance to first level. At this point, you choose a class. And honestly, I don't think anyone calculates XP for the level zero funnel. Typically, you level up just for surviving. That's it. And here's that cool announcement. I'm gonna play a group of level zero peasants in a DCC one-shot posted on Jordan's Jocular Junction. Speaking of cool, remember to check out Dungeon Denizens through the link below or this video about the main basics of DCC. Thank you for your support and keep building. It's for awesome, blah, 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 blah. It's for, oh, <laughs> the script is not ready yet. It's for people who like awesome stuff, like 500 new monsters. Five, 500 new, yeah.